Kia good morning everyone, which one here, welcome back to the channel. Today we are looking at another brand new autofocus lens from Meiki. This time it is this 50mm f1.8 lens. This lens is initially available for the Nikon Z mount and that's also the sample I received from Meiki. But it will also be available for the Sony E very soon with the identical optical formula. So even though this review is using the Nikon Z version and I will focus on thoughts from Nikon users point of view, but most of my test results should also be applicable to the Sony version as well. Mickey told me this lens has four special selling points, zero distortion, very well controlled ghosting and fairing, no chromatic aberration and high resolution. In this review, we'll test out the performance of this lens and see if these special selling points that Meiki told me are indeed true or not. We'll start the review with the image sharpness test first. So Meiki said this lens is very sharp. So for me to see how sharp it is, I went to see my friends at the Auckland Camera Center and borrowed a Nikon Z 50mm f1.8 lens and did some comparison tests. It may not be a really fair comparison as the Nikon lens is about four times the price of the Meiki, but hey, Meiki Z is a sharp lens, so let's do some comparison with one of the sharpest 15mm 1.8 lens in the market. Look at the center of the photo. At f1.8, the center sharpness of the Meiki is already very decent. I even can see a little bit of false color because of the sharp image. Stopping down to f2.8 improved the sharpness a little bit. But since the lens is very sharp at f1.8 already, so the improvement is pretty small. And because of that, stopping down the lens any further wouldn't improve the sharpness anymore. The image starting to become softer from f11 because of diffraction. But you know what? A crazy thing is, when I compare the center of the photo shot with the Meiki, with the photo shot with the Nikon 50mm lens, there really isn't too big a difference between these two lenses. The Nikon may be slightly sharper and has slightly more contrast, but the difference is really small. Definitely not four times more expensive better. That surprised me a bit. And now let's have a look at the corner. At wide open f1.8, the extreme corner of the Meiki is soft. Stopping down the lens would gradually improve the sharpness, and by f8, the corner becomes very sharp. Focus at the center or at the corner of the photo makes no difference to the corner sharpness of the Meiki, which suggests this lens has very flat field curvature, which is good news. If we compare the Meiki with the Nikon, the Nikon is definitely a lot sharper at the corner. Even at f1.8, the Nikon is already very sharp and it remains very sharp as we stop down the lens. Meiki can only catch up the corner sharpness once we stop down the lens to f8. Now I guess we know why the Nikon is so much more expensive. Before we move on to the next test, Let's have a look at the sample photos shot with the Meiki and Nikon again. These photos were shot with the camera fixed on the tripod at the exact same place and with the same fixed white balance as well. Comparing these two photos, the photo shot with the Meiki is a little bit warmer. The photo shot with the Nikon is a little bit cooler. The feel of view of the Meiki is a little bit tighter than the Nikon, but the difference is very small. Another thing I notice is the Meiki has a little bit less distortion than the Nikon. The Nikon isn't bad, but if I switch back and forth between the photo that shot with the Meiki and the Nikon and look at the bottom right corner, I can see the Nikon has a bit more barrel distortion than the Meiki. The Meiki's distortion is really good. And if we look at this brick wall photo, Meiki's distortion is really good. There's only a very minor amount of pin cushion distortion. 
and by applying a negative 2 distortion adjustment in Lightroom, then I get virtually no noticeable distortion. To be honest, I won't be bothered to do any distortion correction because the distortion is just so little that I don't think it will really matter at all when we are shooting real world photos. If you want to shoot close up photos with this Makey lens, the minimum focus distance is 63cm. I'm not too sure what is the maximum magnification ratio, but the minimum focus distance is slightly longer than the average 15mm lens. This is the photo I shot at the minimum focus distance. You can see the magnification ratio is okay, but certainly not amazing. This photo was shot at f1.8. If we zoom in, the sharpness is acceptable. Stopping down the lens even just to f2.8 would improve the sharpness to really good. Being a fast 15mm lens, it is quite easy to create shallow depth of field photos and blur the background. The bokeh from this 15mm lens is pretty smooth and pleasant looking. Sometimes there could be a little bit of halo around the edges of the bokeh balls, but overall I think it still looks pretty pleasant and I don't really see any crazy cat's eye bokeh at the corner of the frame. We'll look at vignetting next. There is some noticeable but not too serious vignetting at wide open. Once we stop down to f2.8, then vignetting becomes almost not noticeable. And from f4 onwards, you don't really see vignetting anymore. So the overall vignetting performance is not bad at all for a f1.8 prime lens. One of the things Makey told me about this lens is that it has no chromatic aberration. And I think the chromatic aberration control is pretty good better than the average for a lens at this price point. But I won't say this lens has no chromatic aberration. I see a bit of chromatic aberration in some of my real world photos, but mostly when there is very high contrast. In my local test photo, I can see a bit of magenta and green tint, but the amount is quite reasonable. So I think chromatic aberration is reasonably well controlled, but not no chromatic aberration. One of the first thing I usually test when I receive a lens is lens flare. I like to test it when I receive a brand new lens because once I start using the lens for a while, the front and the rear of the lens may get a bit dirty and that would affect the lens flare test result because all those dust and grease would introduce additional lens flare. So that means when I test the lens flare, I really have to clean the lens very carefully so I don't get bad results just because the lens is a bit dirty. But anyway, the lens flare performance of this lens is very good. I was very impressed immediately after I did my first lens flare test at the middle of the day. There is very little amount of lens flare and ghosting. For a lens at this price, I am really impressed. Whatever coating they have at the front, it is a very good one. Contrast and colors is almost always very good as well, even when shooting into bright light source directly. It's not very often I would praise Chinese lenses with good lens fair performance, but this Makey lens definitely impressed me. I want to talk about sun stars now. With this Makey lens, when you stop down the lens to around f5.6, you're starting to see a bit of sun stars. But if you want the sun stars to have sharp, narrow tails, then you need to stop down to f11. At f16, the sun stars looks quite sharp. It's still not as clean and symmetrical as I want, but I think it's good enough that I certainly won't complain about it. If you want to use this lens to take photo at night or do astrophotography, this lens has quite a bit of butterfly shaped comma flare at f1.8 and you need to stop down the lens quite a bit to get rid of that. As I've mentioned at the beginning of this review, this lens is available for both the Nikon Z mount and the Sony E mount and the lens I have received from Makey is the Nikon version. So this is not the first Makey Z mount autofocus lens and it seems Makey has improved a lot compared to the first Makey Z mount autofocus lens that I reviewed about a year or two ago. 
when shooting photos, the autofocus is very smooth and really quiet as well. With my Nikon Z6, sometimes there is a tiny bit of hunting before it locks onto the target. This doesn't happen if I shoot with the native Nikon 50mm lens even though I'm using a Nikon Z6. But despite that, the autofocus speed is still pretty decent. Face or eye detection work as expected. So overall, I don't really have any real problem with the autofocus performance of this lens when shooting photos, especially consider this is a budget third party lens. If you are planning to use this lens for some video work, this lens has quite a bit of focus breathing. With my usual 1m to infinity focus breathing test, I see some very obvious zoom effect as I change the focus distance. I can see the focus breathing even when shooting photos, so focus breathing is pretty obvious. There could also be a bit of focus overshooting and hunting before it will lock on the target. And I want to emphasize is partially due to me using a Nikon Z6. If I'm testing with a newer camera like the Z8 or Z9, I believe it should be much better. I said that because when I repeat the same test with the Nikon Z 50mm f1.8 lens, there is also a bit of overshoot and takes a bit of time before the camera will lock onto my target. But with the Nikon lens, there is less hunting and the overall time it takes to lock on the target is also a little bit less. So overall, I think the autofocus performance is still pretty good and most people should be happy with it. But it's not perfect and I hope Makey can do a bit more fine tuning with firmware updates. Last but not least, let's talk about the design and build quality of this Makey lens. First of all, this lens is a really affordable lens. The price of this lens is only $159. This makes it one of the cheapest full frame autofocus 15mm f1.8 lens for mirrorless cameras. It is quite a bit cheaper than the already pretty cheap Sony FE 15mm f1.8 lens which is around $250 and significantly cheaper than the Nikon Z 15mm f1.8 lens which is almost $600. I want to talk about the price because the price really affects the design and quality of the lens and also expectation from customers. I will have a really different expectation if the lens is $500 compared to less than $200. With this Makey lens, the body has a very plastic construction. Having said that, for a budget lens, the build quality and construction of this Makey lens is better than a lot of similar price lenses in the market. Firstly, the lens has a metal lens mount and there's also a bright red color weather seal on the lens mount. So this is already better than some of Nikon's own cheaper Z mount lenses that use plastic mount and has no rubber seal on the lens mount. However, I did ask Meiki is this a weather sealed lens and they told me it's not. So be a bit careful if you want to shoot under bad weather with this lens. I'm sure a few drops of rain on the lens should not matter, especially it has rubber seal on the lens mount, but I will be a bit cautious if I need to shoot under heavy rain. On the metal lens mount, there is a USB-C port for firmware update. There's also a AF-MF switch on the lens. So for a lens that is less than $200, it is actually not too bad. I mean, apart from the lens hood that I really don't know why, but it feels like I'm about to break something every time I mount it onto the lens. I have no other complaint about anything else in terms of design and build quality of this lens. This lens has a pretty complicated 7 groups, 11 elements optics design. The front filter thread of this lens is 58mm. Maybe because the size of this lens is not small for a 15mm f1.8 lens. I mean, when I place it next to the Nikon 15mm f1.8 lens, which is already not a small lens, the Meiki is noticeably taller. So it's really quite a big 15mm f1.8 lens. So anyway, I measured the weight of my Nikon Z sample and it weighs 382 grams 
so there is a bit of weight when you hold the lens. Having said that, Nikon's own 15mm f1.8 Z lens is still about 10% heavier at 415 gram. So who do I think this Meiki 15mm f1.8 lens is for? I think it's for people who have bought their full frame mirrors camera with the kit zoom lens, but you want a fast prime lens, maybe it's to create some shallow depth of field image, or maybe it's for improving the low light performance, and you don't really want to spend a lot of money. So this Meiki Autofocus 15mm f1.8 lens would fit your budget, and the spec seems pretty good as well. In terms of actual performance, it is not bad for a budget lens. While I haven't done any very extensive tests and compared it with the Nikon Z 15mm f1.8 lens, the few tests I did shows that, well, the Nikon is a better lens, not surprised. After all, the Nikon is one of the best 15mm f1.8 lens I've ever tested in terms of image quality. But at one quarter the price, the Meiki is not bad at all. The center sharpness of the Meiki is pretty much the same as the Nikon, even at f1.8. Distortion seems to be even better. Autofocus is fast and quiet, even though it has a little bit more hunting. Corner sharpness is the main area that shows why the Nikon is such an expensive lens. But for most users, corner sharpness is really the least important thing for a 15mm f1.8 lens. Very often, you buy a f1.8 lens to shoot at f1.8 or close to it, and you will only want your main subject in focus, and we would never place our main subject at the very corner of the frame. So corner sharpness is almost not important at all when shooting with a 15mm f1.8 lens. However, if I need to shoot something that requires good corner sharpness, usually landscape photos, then we will stop down to at least around f4 or even a little bit more to get very good corner sharpness. But then this is probably what we would do anyway when shooting landscape photos as we want to have more depth of view, especially with a 15mm lens. So if you are someone who wants to have a fast 15mm f1.8 lens, but don't like the first party lens price, this Meiki 15mm f1.8 can be a very attractive choice. To me, the only real negative thing about this lens is the size of this lens. I really feel a 15mm f1.8 lens should be a bit smaller. To me, that is the real drawback for this Meiki lens. But if you are happy with a slightly larger 15mm lens, then this lens would be a very good value for money choice.